you you miss out on engaging with the truth that everyone else is engaging in if you're only focused on what you're doing. If you're only focused on your own skills or or how you look or how you sound or you, you miss out. You, you miss out. Welcome to Soundless Doctrine, the podcast of Sovereign Grace Music, where we explore what the Bible has to say about music and worship in the church and encourage those who plan, lead, and participate in their Sunday gatherings each week. Hello, and welcome to the Soundless Doctrine podcast. My name is David Zimmer. My name is Bob Coughlin. Do you think people ever forget our names? Uh, it's for people who have just joined us on this podcast. <gasps> They're not familiar with who we are, what okay. this is. <laughs> Okay, so I think great. it's a good starting point. Okay, great. I'm Bob Coughlin. <laughs> Excellent. How are you doing? I'm doing amazing. That's so H- great. I'm doing awesome. I am so excited to be in our new studio filming our podcast. It, and if you're listening on Spotify or Apple Music or somewhere else, you can't see that. Right. But we keep reminding people because it's such a gift to yeah, be here. Such a blessing. Amen. amen. And we have so many fun topics for this new season that we are yep. on. This being one of them, our conversation today. I think so. Musicians are part of the congregation too. <laughs> I love that title. <laughs> Hey, musicians are part of the congregation too. Coming from musicians, we yeah. want we want to be clear. Yeah, and we thought this would be a, a good one to talk about because yeah. when we have the privilege of being in some place outside of our local congregation, which is not too often, but sometimes we are, we find that we're often saying that. Yes. Hey, you're part of the congregation too. <laughs> yes. Know? Whether it's the the drummer, the the vocalist, the keyboardist, whatever. Just but just getting this mindset that if you are part of a a band, a music music group that leads in your church, leads the singing, that you are m- to think of yourself more as part of the congregation than than not. Right. And so we just thought it'd be good to to talk about some of the reasons why that's so, like signs that we aren't seeing ourselves as part of the congregation and why we tend to think this way, and then just dig into the Word, as we want, always want to do in the Sound Plus Doctrine podcast, yeah. to find out, well, what is how, what, how would Scripture direct us in terms of leading in the congregation, and then, then maybe what are some ways we can address that. Right. And we've talked previously on this podcast just about musicians and the fact that being a musician or a singer or an artist or a creative can tend to be so individualistic yes. in its practice, yes. you know, and, 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 and you, you know, we talked ourselves, we've spent hours in practice rooms yes, yes. by ourselves. Thousands of hours. <laughs> and and then, you know, you finally emerge from a practice room, hopefully, and you're playing with other people. <laughs> hopefully, you emerge from your practice room. If some of you are still in your practice room listening to this, you got to get out. Yeah, it's time to interact with people. Absolutely. But, uh, so I think, you know, it, it, it may be obvious, well, yeah, we are part of the congregation. Yes. But... Everywhere we go, we constantly realize, oh, it's not as obvious as we thought. Yeah, so that'll come up when we we see or interact with band members who just don't see, seem to be even aware of the congregation. Mm-hmm. Like whether there are people there or not, they just they're doing the exact same thing. Mm-hmm. Um, s- sometimes, you know, either because of in ears or because um, just the the wedges are so loud, the feedback, the the. Uh, Foldback is so loud, they don't even hear the congregation. Right. Um, sometimes they just don't seem involved. Uh, like it, as we're singing, you know, like say, uh, you know, an instrumentalist who is playing their part, whether yeah. it's a violin or guitar or whatever. And then when they're not playing, they're just kind of right. standing there. <laughs> right. Just, hey, hey, you're a part of the congregation too. Right. And you wouldn't expect someone in the congregation to just kind of stand there right uh, and not not be involved so the 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 mindset is the their part the, the part they play is a musical part and they're there to to fulfill their musical part and and that's pretty much it right and I'm, don't you think we take a lot of our cues as just talking about musicians from what we see I mean what we see on Instagram or YouTube or yes. TikTok or you know we see we we get our cues uh, from 
well, this person, how they stand, how the faces <laughs> they make, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just thinking of some piano players I've seen, keyboard players, where, you know, they're playing. Again, you got to see this on YouTube to see it, but they're playing, and it's like, you know, they're just playing a chord, but it's like, yeah, you know, it's the head, hardest head chord they've ever played. It's like, <laughs> this is, oh, and it's just like, why are you doing that? Like, yeah. That's just so unusual. Right. Well, and, you know, it's the it's the stank face. You know, if you play bass or drums, it's like, <laughs> it's like, oh, man, this stinks. It's so good, you know. Did you and call it the stank face? It's the stank face, yeah. So I, I think we take our cues from everywhere around us, what we see. And what you realize mm -hmm. is a church, your local congregation, is so different. Yeah, yes. <laughs> hopefully. Mean, yeah, hopefully. Now, that's not always true. Sometimes the congregation is in that whole vibe, in that whole cultural moment, and it's just like, yeah, this is what we want to be. Mm -hmm. But that's not what we want to be. Right. We don't want to be so like the culture that that no one can tell any difference right. when they walk in. So yeah, I think cultural um, things that we imbibe from the culture. I think just the fact that we stand in front of people. Yeah. And we're, there's a separation. Yes. You know, sometimes more than others. I remember one. I've been in buildings, and I think I was in. Uh, we was a pastor at a church that had. Okay, I'm trying to remember. Uh, anyway, I've been in buildings where the stage, the platform, oh, yeah. is like four feet high. Yes. And it's like, wow, we are. It's harder in those moments. You know, you're behind a microphone. Right. Um, you're behind an instrument. Behind wedges. Yeah. Most likely. And there's this this separation yeah. that makes you feel like, well, we're doing something different from what they're doing. Right. We have our role. They have their role. And we're basically just kind of, you know, doing our thing. They're doing their thing. We're doing it together. Mm -hmm. But there's no real sense that we are of a piece. We're, mm -hmm. we're one congregation, which is yeah. why we, we would say to bands, you're a member of the congregation too. And then in-ears can be a problem. Yeah. Because you don't have people in the congregation using in-ears, hopefully. And that can make you feel separate. Right. And I feel convicted at times when we use in-ears and when I use in-ears and I haven't, you know, put up the ambient mic. Ambient what mic is, is a, yeah. you know, mic you put in front of the band and it, it's meant to amplify the congregation. What's happening in the sound? And if I've gone, you know, halfway through a rehearsal and I realize, oh, I, I don't have the ambient mic up, that's like, ah. I'm not even thinking about the congregation. Mm -hmm. No, I, mm -hmm. I want to think about the con congregation because I'm a part of it and yeah. we're here to serve them. Yeah. And then I think on the heart level, there's this, there's just this performance mindset where, mm -hmm. you know, be because of our desire to look good and to, to be thought well of, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a performance. It's, uh, you know, I, I got to do do the best and people have to come up afterwards and say, that was great. That was amazing. And and so I feel separate from people because I feel like I'm trying to not serve them, but impress them. Yeah. And there's such a huge difference. Right. Uh, so that, that too can contribute to, I mean, people in the congregation hopefully aren't thinking, <laughs> you know, I need to impress the people around me. Mm -hmm. With my voice, with you know how high I lift my hands, with whatever, right. you know, it's just no, we're here all singing, right? And then our going back to the culture piece, I think our culture can tend to elevate those who are in the front, yeah, as being unique, special, and so you're different, yeah. And so I, I was I was thinking about this and and you know gathered some scriptures that that speak about. You know the place of the musician yeah. in in uh, the congregation. Yeah, well, and I don't I don't know if uh, I don't know if we're going to get here or if I'm jumping the gun, but I'll let you know. Take it a step, taking what we're talking about even a step further of just people who are wanting trying trying to serve and be faithful on Sundays. To it really is a gig, and you you're not a part of the the oh, service. Oh wow! I don't even know if. Yeah, That's I think worth talking about. Yes, but I, I, you know, I've played in contexts where there's a there's a green room culture we like to call yes, it, yes. where it's where you're separate and you play and then you leave. Yeah, I I know we did the podcast. Um, should 
uh, you pay your musicians, mm -hmm. which is actually one of our most listened to watch podcasts, mm -hmm. which I find fascinating. Um, because there's nuance to that, that sometimes yeah. you should, sometimes you shouldn't. Right. Uh, I think in the majority of cases that that you that musicians should do what they do because they love to serve in the church and yeah. use their gifts there. But there are nuances to it. Um, and go listen to the podcast if, if you want to find out what we said. Um, but yeah, th this conversation rules out that mindset yeah. completely. Yep. You're not hiring someone to come in and, and just fill a role uh, as a bass player. Right. You know, that it undermines what the church is. Yeah, and it, it strips um, your, the musicians you're using or the singers you're using of the privilege of being a part of the congregation. Yes. I mean, yeah. well, that's what we're talking about generally. Yeah. Yes. Are, do you feel like you're a part of it? Some people don't even want to be a part of yes. it. They just want yes. to use their gift yeah. and walk in, play, and leave, or yes. not be engaged. And it's one of the saddest things that when when you know you have musicians serving on a Sunday that aren't in the service yes. taking notes. Yes. Yes. Well yeah. <laughs> Participating. We, we are going to get to all that. Like how, <laughs> you know, what what should we be doing as musicians? But I, I just I just thought of, you know, the idea that we are one body. As the church gathers, it's one body. Yeah. And we don't have one part of the body saying I'm going to bounce. Uh, yeah. See ya. Yeah, I'm out of here. Um, so yeah, it, it, to, to, have the, to have the mindset that we can just hire people in and they can do their thing and then they're not there, it, it undermines what we are doing as we gather. And that is yes. we're expressing our unity as the body of Christ, yep. which, which Paul makes clear in 1 Corinthians 12 and 14 mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. Ephesians 4 and other places that we, we are linked together. We mm -hmm. are knit together, joints and sinews. Um, and God intends for that to be something that happens outside our Sunday meeting as well as yes. during the Sunday yep, meeting. Yep, yep. So anyway. Good. So here's some scriptures <laughs> that um, I think, uh, there, there are many more than these, but um, just as I was thinking about this topic, uh, I think apply and help us think through it. Mm. One is one I came uh, across just in my devotions recently was in Ezra 3, when they're, they've returned from Babylon and they're rebuilding the temple. And it's fascinating how throughout the Old Testament, different places, First Chronicles, um, you know, and Ezra, th there are uh, this focus. There's this focus on the musicians, yeah, and on the singers. So this was this is Ezra three ten and eleven, when the builders laid the foundation of the temple of the Lord, the priests in their vestments came forward with trumpets, and the Levites, the sons of Asaph, with cymbals to praise the Lord according to the directions of David, king of Israel. And they sang responsively, hmm. praising and giving thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever toward Israel. And this is the response. And all the people shouted with a great shout when they praised the Lord, because the foundation of the Lord was laid. Hmm. Of foundation of the house of the Lord was laid. Mm -hmm. So there you have the priests and the Levites making noise and singing. They got cymbals, they have trumpets, trumpets, and they're singing. He is good. And all the people are going, yeah, yeah. So there you have a, a clear distinction. And there are other places like this where the Levites were singing and the people were bowing or worshiping or shouting and in yeah. response. And yeah. It's not as clear, other than the invitations in the Psalms to sing to the Lord, yes. sing to the Lord, sing yes. to the Lord. Um, there's not a lot of examples mm -hmm. in the Old Testament, and we got to get Jeff Perswell on the podcast to talk more about this, where um, you know everybody's singing together. Yeah, but that changes in the New Testament. Yes, right. And I think one of the most obvious reasons for why is that in Christ. We have all become priests. Yes. So you have First Peter 2, 4 and 5. As you come to him, a living stone rejected by men, but in the sight of God, chosen and precious, you yourselves, like living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, <laughs> to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Yeah. So, so you know, it's not like... And we can have this mindset. There's someone upon the f platform who is your special priest. Right. 
they're they're going to get you in. Right. And I, I, you know, we experience that. We've talked about that when someone come, comes up to me and says, or to any leader and says, thanks for leading me into the throne room. Yeah. And I said, I didn't lead you into the throne room. Yeah. Jesus did that. <laughs> it's like a joke that we use uh, at, at this point. <laughs> well, it's like, I mean, I know what they're saying. Yeah, they're, but they but they see that elevated position and mm-hmm. that that's what you're mm-hmm. that's what you're speaking to that's right. the misunderstanding right I, I think i think a beautiful representation of this uh as we are just coming off of easter i'm not sure when this podcast is going to air but and seeing christ himself singing with his disciples yes leading a hymn yes. You know, yes. with each of them he is the access point yes that yes. we have and he models that clearly in the upper room so we are all priests, yes, is what yes. you're saying. There isn't one dedicated person. Right. Other than Jesus himself. Yeah, which, obviously. Which yes. you were just alluding to, and I was going to get to that in uh, Hebrews 2. It, the point here is, is not that Jesus leads the singing, but the point is that the Gentiles are now part of the family of God as well. Right, that, amazing. That the nations, that Jesus has redeemed people from every nation as well. But he says uh, in Hebrews 2.10, it was fitting that he for whom and by whom all things exist and bringing many sons to glory should make the founder of their salvation perfect through suffering. Mm-hmm. For he who sanctifies and those who are sanctified all have one source. That is why, and that's talking about Jesus, he is not ashamed to call them brothers, saying... I will tell of your name to my brothers in the midst of the congregation. I will sing your praise. Mm -hmm. So Jesus is the one, and Ron Mann has done some great writing on this. Jesus is the one who is leading our songs. Mm -hmm. So as we gather, and I'm leading, I'm not really leading. I'm not, I'm not, right. You know, I'm giving direction, I'm facilitating, but I'm not leading people into God's presence. (laughs) Jesus has done that. Yes. And that's true for all of us on the platform. Right. We all, as you said, have the same access to God. It's not as though, you know, you got the people. In the foyer, they're pretty far away. That's like the outer courts. And then you got the people in the congregation. Yeah. They're closer, you know. Yeah. And of course, and then you got the holy of holies. Yeah, the holy. That, that's like us on the platform. Right. And so we're like drawing people to what we're doing. It's not that. Yeah. Our access point is Jesus. That's so wonderful uh, that that's the 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 case. That that's the case. Because <laughs> I'm thinking um, we. Uh, I mean, this is good not only for musicians and and song leaders and singers, but it's so it's such a good reminder for people in our congregation. Yeah. You know, I, I think about my wife getting our kids ready to come to church mm-hmm. as I'm here, you know, rehearsing. <laughs> And Putting in the hard hours, doing the hard <laughs> oh, stuff. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. yeah sacrificing for the Lord. <laughs> yeah. You're, you're being white. facetious. <laughs> I am totally, totally. And... Her worship begins before, during, putting the kids there, and as she pulls into the church yes. and gets them, and as she's standing there. It isn't when she's standing there, okay, now I'm ready to receive. Yes. And so I, I think it's yeah. a good reminder for all of us that we all have access. Absolutely. And it's not, it doesn't, f- the weight doesn't fall on your, the worship leader's shoulders. Yes, yes. That should free you up oh, to totally. be a participant and yes. what's happening. Yes. And at some point, we're going to do uh, a podcast, Are You an Anxious Worship Leader? Mm. Which I can't wait to do. That would fit right here. Why are we anxious about that? Why? But this is one of the ways we we get relieved of that burden, is yeah. to realize that Jesus is the one who has led us into God's presence. Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the holy places by the yes. blood of Jesus, by the new and, living way, new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain, that is, through his flesh, and since we have a great high, a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near yes. with a true heart and full assurance of faith. You know, it's like Hebrews, that's Hebrews 10, 19 and, and following. Mm. Um, it's like he's brought us near. Yes. We're not the ones who bring people near. Yes. So then you have uh, scriptures like uh, Ephesians 5, where it's, it's just that one anothering. Do not get drunk right. with wine, but that, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit, addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Hmm. 
it's not just the people out there. Yeah, good. Who are addressing one another? You guys do your thing. You address <laughs> one another. Spirits and songs. We're gonna do our thing up here. Yeah. You know because we're the musicians and yeah. you know, we're the leaders. And no, it's like we're all addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Yeah. Same thing in, in Colossians 3, and I was looking at this, and it's verse 15, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body. Mm. So, so when we're gathering, it's that one bodiness. Yes. We are, we are just one body, and be thankful. We all play different roles, mm -hmm. but we're one body. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in mm -hmm. all wisdom. So again, it's not just the people out there yeah. who are doing the teaching and admonishing to each other. Right. We're not the ones who are teaching. And, no, we're all doing it with each other, not in the formal sense of a, you know, of a pastor teaching doctrine, teaching the Word of God mm -hmm. you know, authoritatively, but we are teaching and admonishing one another through the songs we sing, yeah. by saying, "Hey, remember this. Yes. Hey, call this to mind. Let's let's revel in this. Let's celebrate this." So, so that applies to all of us, mm -hmm. not just the people out there. Right. So, whatever role I'm playing, I mean, I would say that's projectionist as well. You know, mm -hmm. the person running the sound. This is this is really all of us in that room in that gathering, saying, "I'm a part of the congregation. Yeah, I'm not." I'm not removed from this. I'm not exempt from this. And then I thought about Revelation 7, where you know, you know, this is the end. This mm. is the scene in, in heaven and what we're headed towards. Verse 9, after this, I looked and behold a great multitude that no one could number from every nation, from all tribes and peoples <laughs> and languages. And there was David leading them with his <laughs> excellent vocals and guitar riffs. You know, it's, it's no standing before the throne and before the Lamb. Mm -hmm. There's there's no intermediary. Yeah, right. Intermediary. There's no there's no leader that has to make that happen. Yeah. Jesus is the one we're adoring, mm -hmm. and that's what we're headed towards. So, yeah. so that's what's happening as we're, you know, as a congregation, we're we're all one coming before the triune God in the power of the Spirit mm. in Christ, you know, through what he's accomplished, and doing it together. Yeah. So, so I mean, I think those... There's one other scripture I had that uh, from 1 Corinthians... Oh, where was it? 1 Corinthians, yeah, 11, where Paul is just talking to the Corinthians about how, uh, you know, they aren't celebrating the Lord's Supper in a very helpful way. Right. And he says, right. uh, you know, in the first place you come together to the church, I hear that there are divisions among you. Mm -hmm. And I believe it in part. We don't want those divisions. Right. God doesn't want those divisions. Um, right. So we have to work against that mindset. Yeah. And it really will change if, if you're part of a, a team, a band listening to this, it, it will change the way you think about what you do. Yeah. Uh, it will make it more enjoyable. It'll it'll make it more humbling. It'll make it more fulfilling, and it, it'll make it more glorifying to God. It will serve our churches better when we think of ourselves as part of the congregation. So, yeah, I thought maybe we could talk about some of the some of the implications, or or yeah. even how how we would do this. Like you as a drummer, I'd love to hear this. I mean, I've, I've shared this on the podcast before. When I first saw you in 2007, seven, eight mm -hmm. at the Resolve Conference mm -hmm. in California, you were there on your drum platform in the middle, right, right beneath the lyrics, which were, I think, pretty large. And, and intentional. Uh, that yes. It, that we had lyrics there. Yes. Instead of our, instead of our faces. So great. Um, but you were singing your heart out. And so I, I would just, I just love to hear, like you were demonstrating what we're talking about. Mm. You weren't just the drummer. I mean, you're an amazing drummer. You were, you know, just playing just great stuff. But, but you saw yourself, it seemed to me, mm -hmm. and tell me if I'm wrong, you saw yourself as, hey, I'm just here being led by Jesus yeah. in praise of the Father, and I get to use my drums too, 
But man, I'm not going to miss out on using my voice. So what? Yes. I mean, what were you thinking? Well, I, I think. Um, well, I, I. I guess to speak broadly to you know musicians uh, or just to, to instrumentalists, you you miss out on engaging with the truth that everyone else is engaging in if you're only focused on what you're doing. If you're only focused on your own skills or or how you look or how you sound or you, you miss out. You, you miss out. The notes that you are responsible for. Yeah. Yeah. Which it's good to be responsible for. Them. It absolutely is. Yeah. And so I don't want to miss out. I, I want to be mm. keyed in mm. to what we're saying and what we're singing. And I want to be to play in a way that's undistracting so that we can all be keyed in on what we're singing yes. and what we're saying. Because what we're saying is the most important thing. Yes. My, my drumming, my skill and ability, it's never going to change someone's perspective. It's never going to change someone's heart. It's never going to yeah, yeah, convict yeah. anybody. Uh, it, it might impress them, but that's fleeting. It might convict them to practice more, <laughs> in that sense. <laughs> but that's fleeting. And I'm sure you would agree with all these things. Like, uh, But... The only thing that will truly affect them and change them and have a lasting impression on them is God's word. Yes. Is the truth yes. of what we're singing. The gospel, yes. And so yes. as a musician, as an artist, as a singer, I want to get out of the way. But I want to I want to lead in a way that's skillful, so that takes practice, but I want to get out of the way. And and the best people, song leaders that do that, uh, you, 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 yourself included, Bob, is you you get out of, out of the way. You lay yeah. a foundation for people where they can sing with full faith, yes. and you do that in a way that's joyful and encouraging, and that can be convicting of yes. like, oh, wow, he he's engaged. Yeah, Why am yeah, I yeah, not? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But to do that in a way that, that gets out of the way. Yeah, and that I think one of the that leads to another implication is that you know as a as a lead vocalist, if I'm if I'm seeing myself as just part of the congregation, I'm not going to have to have people hear my voice the entire time. Oh yeah. So you can say that again into the mic. Okay. If I if I'm the leader, <laughs> the lead vocalist, people haven't come gathered that Sunday morning to listen to my voice above everybody else's voice the entire time. The entire time, right. There's just no need for it. Right. Unless I'm, it's a habit or I think, or I like the sound of my voice. I mean, there's, there's just not a lot of good reasons for why everybody needs to hear my voice the entire time we're singing. Yeah. So what I'll tend to do is... And this is really bad if if I'm doing a recording and and people are like recording my voice because I'm always pulling off. My, <laughs> it's like you don't need to hear me. You don't need to hear what I'm doing. Yeah. It's like my, I have an okay voice, but it's not something that you know um, people are going to go back and hey, I want to hear you again. It's, it's I want to hear the congregation. Well, and a perfect example of that, and I, I apologize if I cut you off, but a perfect example no, that of that, that was the end of what I was going to say is are all the T4G albums. Mm. Uh, that I'm sure if you listen to this podcast, you're aware of those, but if you aren't aware of them, they're all on Apple Music, Together Spotify. For Together for the Gospel albums. And I mean, the, the, the lead singer are the 5,000, 12,000, yeah, I don't yeah, know how many yeah, people are there. Depending on what conference it was, yeah. <laughs> that, that's the main voice. Well, for those, for those albums, I consciously, different times, stayed on mic because I knew... They're going to overpower you. <laughs> well, no, 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 no. I knew that uh, they wanted my voice. That they yes. Were there. But mix-wise, we would just, I, I'd start it, and then they'd bring up yes. the, the congregation. Because that's what I heard. Yes. I heard these, yeah, you know, when it, at its biggest point, it was 12,000 guys, mostly. Um, and they were so loud. Yes. And there were so many times, I just, I didn't have to sing. Right. It's like, no, I'm here to accompany you. Yes. That's what every band, every music group in a church is there to do. Absolutely. We're there to accompany. So if, you, if you're the main uh, vocalist, you don't need to be heard all the time. Um, you know, instrumentalists, we'll sing more. And we, yeah. that should be clear by now that yeah. if we see ourselves as part of the congregation, we'll sing more. Now, I know there are times when, you know, you're, you're not as accomplished on your instrument and... You're learning, and you know you won't be able to sing all the time. 
just sing whenever you can. Yeah, and you know what I tell those instrumentalists is, uh, if you're not playing on the first verse, don't just stand there. Mm. Sing. Mm. That's an opportunity. Yes. Right there. Yes. If you're yes. out, if there's one of the choruses that you're out and you're not playing, sing. Yes, that's, it makes <laughs> least, such a difference. At least you're engaging in those moments. Um, yeah. I mean, I think, I, I think another implication uh, of that is something I mentioned earlier. You'll, you will be a part of the meeting and you'll have a heart to think about the meeting outside of your own Part, part contribution contribution yes to it. yes yes yeah so this will happen at conferences where people will be surprised that like when you go to a conference and you will sit in the in the seats and listen to the person speaking mm -hmm. rather than you know, go back in the back and just kind of hang out until everything's over I, i'm not seeing myself as part of the congregation if that's what i do yeah it's like no i got my part the only thing that's significant to me is the part i play yeah, right. Well, no, you're really not seeing yourself as part of the body that way. I right. mean, Paul addresses that in First Corinthians 12, so yes. it'd be good to just kind of maybe reread that <laughs> and uh, and just see that, no, we all need the the gifts of the body. So yeah, yeah. I think where sometimes churches have two meetings or three meetings, it's like, I think even there, you know, it's not, oh, I heard that message. Oh, maybe you could hear it again, and, and maybe God might say something different to you, and mm -hmm. maybe it would benefit the people to see you sitting listening to the message, yeah, rather than and, and observing what else is happening in the meeting, right? We're just never above that, yeah. We're part of the congregation, and then I, I think uh, maybe close here. It, it's just good to be reminded that there are all these other gifts that mm -hmm. are taking place. Yes, that the Holy Spirit is pouring out gifts in all kinds of ways in the church. And it's not just us. We're not unique. We're not set apart. You know, right. as musicians, we can tend to think, well, we're just the special group. And, and we're not. We're just one of the gifts that God has given for the glory of Jesus. And what a privilege it is to play a part. So, yeah, so, the, so the best part about Sunday morning, if you're a part of a, a team, is just the fact that you're part of the church, mm. that your name's written in the Book of Life, mm. that you that you can call God Father because of what Jesus has done in living a perfect life in your place, receiving the wrath of God in your place for your sins and rising from the dead. And through faith in him, you are now part of the family of God. Amen. What a privilege to be there. Yeah, it is. So if you're, if you're a musician, you are part of your congregation too. Just, yes. let, just remember that. <laughs> and uh, thanks so much for joining us. Yep, thank you. Thank you for listening to Sound Plus Doctrine, the podcast of Sovereign Grace Music. Sovereign Grace Music exists to produce Christ-exalting songs and training for the church from our local churches. For more information, free sheet music, translations, and training resources, you can visit us at SovereignGraceMusic.org.